The next feature that we saw is namespaces. Namespaces group entities under a name. So you can have anything there, like clauses, as you'll see later, objects, functions. And you can have nested namespaces as well, which means you can have a namespace such as STD. So that is a namespace here. And then under STD, you can have a, something like STD algo for algorithms underneath STD. Yeah, you can have different namespaces now that have symbols with the same name. So that means I have, can have the same function name, for example, with different, in a different namespace. And that's quite useful for libraries and large projects to avoid conflicts. Yeah, because often you use something like helper or something, a simple name. Yeah, and um, all the C++ standard library that we will be using is in the namespace std. So when we use a function like cout, it is be found in the namespace std. And where is this namespace coming from? This part from it is coming here from this include file, from the header file io stream. And uh, there are many header files of the standard, of course, but they share this idea to use the std namespace to differentiate it from any code that you are writing to avoid conflicts. As I said, yeah, so that is really a little bit of syntactic sugar because it removes the need for you to write something like std underscore underscore c out that we would have done for large projects when we write a library in C. So how do we declare na such a namespace and how is it declared in the header files? Well, it's declared using the keyword namespace. So to create a namespace like my namespace, I just start namespace my namespace and then I open a block and now everything inside this block is part of this fun of this namespace my namespace and to access an entity inside a namespace I have to use this awkward little bit awkward I would say um, colon colon notation so my namespace colon colon my function now that means the fu my function in this namespace my namespace okay that we just declared over here so why can this be useful? Well, we can have a namespace drawing where we have a function square and circle, so two functions there, and we have a namespace math where we can have something like square again, and we maybe want to use cube. Now what you may want to do is now you may want to draw using the drawing namespace a square with a length of five. And yeah, now this calls the function over here in this namespace or you may want to call a function in the math namespace square which calls this function okay so that's now a convenient way and i hope you, you understand it. it's quite useful in this example to differentiate square from drawing from a square in math sometimes in code you need to write a lot and you use only a single namespace like standard so it is really tedious to repeat this code. So you can use a new syntactic construct, which is the using keyword, which allows you to introduce all symbols of a namespace into the current scope. So when I write here using namespace std, it tells the compiler whenever I use an object to check in my current namespace, which is an empty namespace, so to speak, or in the standard namespace. Okay, so when I write now C out, the compiler will check if there exists any object or function or identifier that is called C out in my current namespace. And if it doesn't, it checks as well in the STD namespace. So now we could avoid to write STD C out, and this could be used in our a little bit tedious function over here, getting rid of all these STD colon colon stuff over here, here, here by just saying using namespace std. It's still allowed, by the way, to keep um, the explicit notation. So you, I could still write in this code std c out if I wanted to specify that I wanted to really mean a standard c out, right? It's just a additional syntactic sugar. Okay, so in our previous example where we had um, the drawing in the math, we could say using namespace math, and so when we say square 50, we, need, we mean math square 50. 
if we mean drawing square, then we have to specify drawing colon colon square. So I think that's pretty easy. And uh, actually, when we talk about object orientation, we already saw some example objects, C in and C out, that are part of the IO stream header and part of this standard library. And they use uh, this namespace STD. So you will often find STD colon colon or using namespace STD in such code. And we use the C in, which inputs data from the, con from the terminal, like um, scan F or get char that we used in C and C out, which outputs data to the console like printf. Right, so there is a difference with the, in terms of this uh, brackets that are used. Yeah, the angular brackets over here, they point to the right, really indicating something comes out of this stream here and flows into this integer. Yeah, and in this case, something comes out of the integer and flows into this stream over here. So it is a little bit syntactic sugar, but I think it makes life a little bit easier, code a bit more readable. So now what you should do now is you pause the video after I'm done with introducing this task and you think about how to write a program that you see in and see out that ask a user for two numbers and then print the bigger of those two values. Okay, think about this for a couple of minutes how you would sketch the code and then I will reveal the answer and now pause the video please. So here is a potential solution. You can see here using namespace standard we need three variables a and b, the two variables here. Um, some is actually not needed we could rewrite this if we wanted. So we say please enter the first integer to c out then from the stream C in, we read A, we ask for the second integer B, we read into B, and now we have our condition, if A is bigger than B, then of course we use C out instead of printf and say A is bigger than B, otherwise we say B is bigger than A or equal to I. So that's very simple code for us.